Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Uh, no, fuck that. Welcome to the Triforce podcast, hello. bitches. Woo! Okay. That's the kind of intro I want. None of this sort of, hello. Let's fucking get people pumped. Let's get them. It's the oh, Triforce sorry. podcast. Give me your high pitched okay. Lewis. Like. Let's pump them out of their minds. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, uh, nice. That was good. Oh my God. Whatever uh, that noise was, do that. Okay. Like, start mm. with that, like, welcome. Like that. Came from deep inside. Good. Yeah. I um I I went to the docks this week. Oh, that was interesting. Did you Everything get it okay? sorted? The, the general malaise was it resolved? Um, I've had a, I've got I've had, I've been referred to like three different specialists. Do you have a case of ennui? Is it just a bit of ennui? <laughs> a little ennui. I'm just I've my my, my health is mentally I'm fine. Yeah. Right. Um, obviously, but debatable. Um, but yeah, carry on. Physically, I'm I'm experimenting with being sick. Uh, right. and, <laughs> okay. you know, I've just tried that out for a while Yeah, and, and seen how it works for me and, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I've, I've, I don't know. There's a couple, couple of things like, um, Maybe I'm it's just, just so a vitamin allergic. Deficiency, I'm just a, you know? I'm just a special boy. Do mm. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm intolerant to all sorts of, um, food groups. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that's something that comes with age. You get more intolerant of, uh, in general, it's foods that I'm intolerant of. Right. I or find as I get older, I, of me. I, maybe they don't like me. I, I'm, I'm I, becoming just, just incredibly racist and sexist as I get older. It's, it's getting worse and worse. See, this is what I'm saying. You know, you start to... I'm joking, by the way, internet. I think it's more context, right? Like doing even like a Welsh accent now doesn't feel cool. Yeah, of course, know? nobody cares. Right. <laughs> I see Welsh, what you the mean. Welsh are cool with it. Yeah. You, uh, well, here's the thing: it's very hard to do a good Welsh accent. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, you know, I, I think especially because we're British, it's all right to do accents of other British regions. I'd be surprised if anybody had an issue with that, whether they were Welsh I think or that's, Scottish. I think that's fine for now, but ten years time. Uh, 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 well, sorry, are you getting on the? Ooh, can't see anything these days. Are you getting in early on that train? But well, no, I just I can see the direction it's going. You know? No, I don't think anybody Welsh would seriously. Also, I don't think most people actually give a shit. I think it's just the vocal, as usual, a vocal minority gets all the the, the squeaky wheel gets the onions, as they say. Sure, maybe. maybe. So I'm pretty sure maybe, that maybe. if you you could go to Wales and ask people if a comedian did uh, a Welsh accent as part of their set, would you be offended? And I think I guess if you put it what to they them, do I'm, in that Welsh exactly. Accent. If they were like, yeah. "Oh, I'm so stupid, and all I can do is eat." Leaks all day. I'm, I'm useless. I am. <laughs> like it, it, then you might say, "All right, calm oh. down, son. You're making fun of us for no reason." You know. Then, yeah. Right. But but it's That's not true. in it in and of itself. I don't think there's a history of Man. of hatred there. I would first say. it was Wisconsin, then it was Luton, and now Wales. We're scaling I think it's up because we've got. We don't have a I think it's because Wales. we've got Daff and Sophie in the office who are our office very Welsh, and they're both quite Welsh. And as a result, they tend to. I don't want to say they're like they're recruiting new Welsh people, oh, but no, I have are. noticed. Yeah, they're like they've got a Welsh agenda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, they literally. And have. actually, do you know what? I'm down for it. You know, yeah. the the you soft wanna, the soft voice. The um. You want to diversify, it, but you that you then want to just uh, out with the old, in with the new. You you're going full Wales. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm think... not being silly, but when we went out last time I was down, we went out for a drink with uh, the pub crew. Right. Um, and uh, Sophie was there, and she is she is incredibly Welsh, and I think she's from the same part of Wales as Dav. They're she's actually not. From she's Cardiff, from Cardiff. Aren't they? Yeah, but I so thought Dav was so from Cardiff. Cardiff is the least Welsh Welsh place, though. Really. She, but I mean, she's, I in, she's very Welsh. Wales, but it's kind of. She, I don't think she even really speaks. Is Welsh, it the though. capital of Wales? I thought it was like so. Port Talbot or something like that. I'll no, no. Down, no, it's got a anyway, bit Cardiff, right? I, I feel like Bristol's close enough to Wales oh, that it is Cardiff, Daff, about Daff that. has got his eyes on a on a takeover. Do you know what I mean? Oh well, when when I when he did literally say that because Sophie was Welsh, that that's the only reason she got the job. She's not competent at all. It's just because right, she's no. Welsh. That was Daff said that, and Sophie was just nodding along and agreeing. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's, this isn't that's true. Fair. No, it's not no, true. Again, these are lies. These are either. lies and, and deceptions. Well, I mean, it's like an incompetent person. How would he know? How would Dav uh, know how would what incompetence looks like? Incompetence he, of someone else. <laughs> Dav would be like, true. "Seems fine to me." <laughs> no, they're both great. Uh, I, we love them. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I, you know. I, I. I think this is the the, the modern way. You know, infiltration. In, in, you know, just got to 
get put your yeah you got to take there. it down from the inside uh, that, it's not yeah. new nothing new I mean, this has been going on for since exactly. the dawning of time yeah since, wake uh, up people it's yeah. it's happening the welsh are trying to take over yeah and and you know they've they've got a lot of um they got a lot of, a lot of grievances the old welsh um what was it? The because obviously the Prince of Wales is our king. Yeah, they don't the like the which, Prince um, of Wales. They they really don't like. They don't. They didn't like the old Prince of Wales, and then they were really hoping that uh, they would that they would get rid of the title, so there wouldn't be so William wouldn't be the Prince of Wales. They would just say, you know what, we're done. We don't need a Prince of Wales anymore. Really? And then and then they made William the Prince of Wales, and they're like, oh fuck. Yeah. They don't want to be represented by an English uh, monarch in that way. You right. Know? Well, we did conquer. They them, want so somebody, somebody Welsh. That land's um, got to go to somebody. Can't go to the Welsh. It's got to go to one of the uh, the English royal family. That's pretty. Well, much there how was it goes. a story, though. This isn't true, but the story was that when we conquered Wales and executed the last king, David the Third. Yeah. Um. We in the, the, the king keep- said, "Don't worry, Wales. I will give. I will make the next prince of Wales someone who doesn't speak any English. Um. And is born in Wales. Right. Yeah. Right. So. He brought so his Dav. wife yeah. to he brought his wife to Carnarvon Castle. She gave birth to a son who obviously didn't speak any English because he was a baby yeah. and uh, was born in Wales. So, but that's not actually hello. That's not actually technically true. Hello. No, we sorry, just missed you, like you, you a whole bunch of what there, you but... just said. You're oh, cut, sorry, you cut out big time. I'll, I'll do it again. So I'm sure it was so recorded. We just missed. Yeah, yeah, it was recorded. Yeah, but you, I'll, I'll do it again. You won't get my um, hilarious reaction to it. Though. Indeed. So, so she gave birth to a son in. Cut off and cut down again. This is the Welsh conspiracy. I'm not even kidding. You yeah, cut yeah. out again. Every time you say this, you're being you're being censored. You're right. being censored, censored by the Welsh conspiracy. They must, you must be you must be tripping it up. You must be saying like a key word or something. You're close like, to the truth. You're too close. Okay. You're not okay. too close. Yeah, <laughs> that must be it. Oh well. Anyway, it's not true. But uh, I think it's, it's a nice story. You know, the idea of uh, England screwing old Wales over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I could hear you that time. I'm surprised they didn't censor you. What the hell's going on? Well, that's the truth, you see. Yeah, well, I guess so, yeah. The Welsh the Welsh that have made Discord. They, they allow... Uh, oh my God, they... It's, we thought it was lizards behind the, the, the Illuminati, you know. It yeah. turns out but it's, it's the Welsh. It's the Welsh out, lizards. I, I think leaks are great, uh, you know. I, love I, don't, I, I don't. I don't. They're I don't okay. Like them. I prefer I, I an hate onion. Them. I would not have a leak. Um, if it was, if if I was given the choice, I would never choose a leak. I would always choose something else first. I find that they don't have much taste. They look like shit, and uh, you know, like there's no aesthetic to them. You know, they just look like hell, and they taste not very nice. They're very bland. I leak and potato soup. I would just give me potato soup. Honestly, I don't even need the leak in there. Like I don't think it does anything for the soup. I can't think of any other application of leek that is worth it, worth the time. So, uh, creamed even... leeks is, is quite nice. I will say, so what you do is you get your leek. This this is my leek theory, and leek aficionados, I'm not saying you have to be Welsh, but I'm sure there are a lot of Welsh leek aficionados out there. I think it's okay. The texture, if you don't cook it right, can be a little bit planty. You know what I mean? A little bit, little bit too, ugh. So yeah. I cut the cut the f- the fluffy end off where the roots are, or whatever that is, and then I, I only use the white part of the leek. The green bit, quite honestly, is dog. It's 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 too tough and it doesn't have the flavor. It's like a long onion, the slightly delicate, slightly different But you just said you loved onion. onions. I think onion Preferred just does onions. it better though. That's the thing. I, I agree. I mean I love onion. I, I I love onions. I'm just saying a leek, you, you can do a little a, a few little different things with a leek that you couldn't do with an onion. So cream so leeks is, is very nice. So this is a metaphor for whales. I'm confused. No, I'm what, what no, are you talking No, no, this is just literally We're just us discussing leeks talking and onions. about Okay. Okay. Whether whether yeah. leeks are worth it or not. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind them. The Welsh. I'm no, look no, up, where where I like did the them. onion come from? What's the history of the onion? <laughs> <laughs> this is such a Lord dad. Onion back in 1201. All right, where do you think it comes from? Dad, where did onions for come sure. from? Absolutely not. Where, go on, I thought this, I, I thought that England was like the uh the the world capital of of root vegetables. Onions got to be wow. a root vegetable, I do right? not know where you've got that from, brother. I really don't. I don't know if, I don't know if they are a root we vegetable. We had hardly any native anythings here for, for the carrots. longest time. Carrots, you would have had carrots. Carrots don't come from England. 
Oh my God! They grew tons of them, though. In uh, like post-war, it was like uh, it yeah, like that, saved the country. It was that's in the last fifty years. It was, it was for your eyes to be able to see the planes coming over. Like, yeah, that's as right, with yeah. most of these plants, they came from the fertile it, crescent around that kind of area. Its its wild ancestors probably originated in Persia. That's where the carrot comes from. The onion probably the ancient records of onion use spans Western and Eastern Asia, so the geographic origin is uncertain. Yet domestication likely took place in West or Central Asia. Asia. Okay, and, but uh, well, listen to like this. Go I on. got a I got a, a factoid here, mm. uh, straight from the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Okay. Examples of root vegetables include carrots, beets, <laughs> onions. <laughs> right. I'm not parsnips, commenting on the, on what is a root potatoes, vegetable. sweet potatoes. Right. Which of turnips. those came from Britain? That's the point. Which uh, which vegetables? <laughs> which vegetables? I'm gonna. I'm just doing originated. native native vegetables. UK. What is happening here? <laughs> Cabbages, <laughs> leeks, onions, garlic, basil, thyme, turnips, walnuts, and grapes. Apparently, grapes. Man, I'm intolerant to half of those things. Grape. Very intolerant. Grapes. Intolerant man. Cabbage, cauliflower, parsnip, swede, turnip, onions, Brussels sprouts, runner beans, broad beans, kale, to name a few. Yeah, dog they're shit. native native British vegetables. Yeah, they ain't very. That does explain the cuisine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got a bad what is the UK's, What is the UK's national vegetable? Care to guess? Potato. Uh, we love it. We eat more potatoes than probably any other fucking plant. Hang on, I'm just uh, I'm just going through here just to see what <laughs> it actually have the answer. is. Well, no, because it's one of those articles where it's like, Oops, leeks are Welsh, potatoes are associated with Ireland, and overcooked cabbage, cauliflower, and sprouts are classic school dinner fare. Not it's a, me, it's a it was dog not. shit click, clickbait article. Asparagus is a strong contender for an English vegetable coming into season on St. George's Day. There's no way asparagus originated here. Really? But what could be described as Britain's national vegetable? Potato! The French have the green bean, garlic, and onions. I, I think it would be maybe like pie. Eastern Europeans have pie. the beetroot and cabbage, and Italians can lay claim to the tomato, C she says. Curry. It would be curry. It would be right. our national No, national, national plant dish, right? I mean, look, we chips. We eat chips. We yeah. Chips love would chips. be our national vegetable. Okay, it's no, that's chip. it. That it's it is it is, it's got to be potatoes. It, it, it's not. It, I, oh, can't, I can't skim through this anymore. It's just, it does not say, <laughs> I, I wish internet. it would just say the like in is, one line. It's crap now. It is this. It does not. It's rubbish. Okay. Well, anyway, there you go. Onions, wherever they originated from, but I think they were probably popularized big time in um, in the UK, right? What, the potato? The uh, the onion we're still talking the about. The onion. You'd think the onion was popularized in the UK. I yeah. think it's more French. You crazy. Um, I am cheese. crazy, yes, but also I'm sticking to it. I think I think Britain is that kind of country that would that would uh, revere the the onion. You know, I, I disagree. We we and used to potato. make fun of the French for eating garlic for a well, long time. Yeah, yeah but and I mean, we, uh, like, garlic's great. But we it were is like, great, yeah. bloody garlic. Why would we then eat onions? I don't know. Well, they eat you garlic, tell me. So they eat a lot of butter. I'm though. not going to tell you. You tell me. <laughs> I refuse. French obsessed. I'm a humble with Canadian. Butter. I've got maple syrup coursing through my veins. That's what do true. I know that's about true. onions? That's your, that's your one plant, isn't it? Yeah, the one plant. Syrup. We got a ma the maple tree. Our flag <laughs> is based on it. Our favorite drink is based on it. What's Our the What's the favorite drink? Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Oh, okay. okay. I thought you meant there was a beer that was flavored fizzy. With maple syrup. Fizzy there maple is, syrup. There's all sorts. They really ca They they go for it. Uh, everything is. You can get maple syrup. Um, they moist do towelettes. Go for it. You can get maple syrup um, underpants. You can get maple syrup sleeping bags. Like everything. They just. It's like a huge. We got industry. a couple of Canadians. Well, actually, no. We got one Canadian in in the office, but then we got one fake Canadian who uses a for Canadian passport to 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 stay over here. Oh, Are right. you talking uh, about Paul? You're talking about me. No, Paul's real Canadian. Yeah, yeah but Paul's uh, actually, actually you. I forgot about you, Sip. He's oh, actual, God, yeah. actually fully Canadian. Paul. Paul, yeah. Paul Paul's is actually Paul Canadian. is definitely one of the least Canadian Canadians I've ever met. Though. He's from uh, he's from Edmonton though, which is is sketchy. Honestly, pretty Canadian. Yeah. It's like right in the middle, right? Well, yeah. Alberta's yeah. kind of like the Texas of Canada, so that Paul would make... seems more like a Californian. To Edmonton, me. Edmonton would be like <laughs> like Houston. I guess you know. Right. He he doesn't well. have anything like a Canadian accent at all. I think um, he does. No. And he's he's he he does. 
Paul doesn't have much of a Canadian accent. Isn't Paul Choi the most lovely man? He's a lovely love man, but he does Island. have a Canadian accent. I disagree I with don't, that. I don't think he does. His, Compared uh, to some, some of the Canadians I know, he's like, it's his, very, his, very his subtle. His EPM is quite high as well. I'll, I'll point that out. What is that? His A's per minute. A's per minute, yeah. A. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty mild accent, the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he does get cute. he gets out in the boot that guy for sure. He well, does. I thought Sarah was Canadian <laughs> as well, but she just has a Canadian relative, so yeah, it's much Sarah's easier for her to oh, work so it's over like, in the it's UK. Like washed off on her a bit. No, I don't think so. I think I think I think I just assumed um, because she was so nice, like Paul. You know, I just, I, I, she she was too nice to be an American. I mean, right. I just oh, didn't think they existed. So fully American. Sorry, America. Oh, Sorry, right. there's there's a, there's plenty of nice Americans out there. Yeah. Yeah, not equally, in there's, there's a lot of batshit insane ones as well, but the nice ones are the ones that we should be focusing on. I right? do meet some actually. I I I, I, bet I met a couple of random American fans this week. It's weird how it comes in dribs and drabs. Sometimes I don't see anyone for a week. Lewis, right? they're describing me. fans as dribs and drabs. <laughs> <laughs> dribs and drabs. <laughs> Continue. And so sometimes I don't see anyone in, in in a week, and then sometimes I'll see like three people in a day. I saw a nice. Uh, 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 I was I was walking around the harbour yesterday, and uh, a young. A young lady stopped me. Hello. And I was like, oh, hi. But I was really sweaty, mm -hmm. right? So I'd been like, it's like half jogging. So half you were walking. talking to, to like, a young lady medicine. and you were very sweaty. I was really Carry gross. On. And I was looking like a mess. Yeah. And then I noticed that she was also slightly out of breath because she chased me up a set of stairs. Good oh. God. <laughs> to say hi. And then I was like awkward, uh, awkwarder than usual because I was like, all like, uh, like I was like a, like a, like I've been paparazzi, you know, on a on a jog or whatever. Yeah. Um. Anyway, she was lovely. And then there was then just a minute later, I was walking to the office, and um, there was a guy from Tasmania who who introduced himself, um, and started talking to me, and I was I was like, wow, t that's a you know, I think anyone tells you they're from Tasmania, that's quite interesting, right? The only thing I know about Tasmania, and this is what I told him, is that they don't have many people there, but the government built this super fancy mega stadium and art complex and put like the like way too much money into it and there was this huge huge outcry because uh, they were hoping to make hobart this like cultural capital by luring people in with this with sport and culture but apparently it's just deserted a huge waste of money it's like something um, Luton would do or maybe yeah maybe, exactly maybe pennsylvania would do that as maybe well. hope maybe tasmania is like the Edmonton of um, <laughs> of Australia, yeah, you know. But he was definitely an Australian. He was he was. They were both lovely people, right? But I, I sort of um, with one, I was I was, you know, I was <laughs> I was sort of like I don't know. Sometimes I was just I'm just lucid and I'm able to talk to fans like a normal person. And others, I just become the most awkward weirdo. <laughs> well, it's kind of it, sometimes you get caught off guard. You know, you're not ready to uh, to 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 turn on the razzle dazzle. You know, you're just going about your day, doing normal things. You know, if any any, any normal person office, asked you something too. or whatever, you'd just be like, no thanks or, or whatever. I get this impression when I've like spoken to someone in the office and maybe like, you know, we had like a really sparkling, scintillating conversation one day. Yeah. And then the next time I see them, I'm like, they ignore I, don't, you. I don't have anything they interesting They pretend like they don't know you. And neither do they. They don't even do you know say I mean? hi. It's like, yeah. it's like one day we have great chemistry and the next day um, neither of us want to talk. And maybe it's just because I've offended Daff somehow or something. I don't know. You know, maybe I've like, maybe he listened to this podcast and he was like, heard those things you said about wheels. I'm like, oh, maybe no. you just say uh, you're <laughs> overthinking it though as well, you know, like. Get it in my own head. Yeah. 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 This, this is Taking why yourself therapy. down from the inside, mm. you know. Anyway, I saw this week because I was like, I'm worried that I've got like some sort of long COVID. Right. There are mods added. They've added mods to Elden Ring, The Witcher Three, and Minecraft. Right. Called the long, long COVID mode. What? Right. <laughs> Where you gradually get like more and more uh, sick. tired <laughs> oh and like chronic, like fatigue, uh, and you have to lie down more. <laughs> oh <laughs> What's the God. fucking point? If you've got long COVID, you don't want to pretend in a video game that you also have long COVID. Yeah. I, I think it's organized to like raise awareness um, about it uh, for people who have uh, disruptive stuff. <laughs> so it's like you get like a little pop up that says in Minecraft, it says you're short of breath. Fuck off. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, it's... Uh, 
Uh, it's an interesting you know, like, uh, idea for a uh, for a mod. Oh god! Let's suck I mean, all the fun out of a game. Yeah, cool. you, you can't play this game now. You have to think about people who are sick. Where are these mods for all the other terrible things? Why long? What are you COVID? fucking talking about? Like all these fucking games have these hunger mechanics or nighttime mechanics. Right, yeah. they're it so sucks. fucking stupid. Most of them suck. Painful yeah. enough right? as it is. I don't want to play Tarkov god, like, with long COVID. How much Thank you. are people fucking eating <laughs> in these games? Tarkov's hard enough survival. already without. Yeah. Long COVID, Jesus. I play a fucking survival game for half an hour and I've eaten like 16 cans of beans yeah. and three steaks. Oh, I'm like, I fuck know. me, how much is this guy eating? I exactly. Know. It's so dumb. I played the long it's dark, insane. which I really enjoyed, but like, I get that there's like a calorie intake in a day, but like, man, n nobody on earth is taking in like 30,000 calories a day, which is basically what the game was trying to simulate. Like, I would, I go fishing, I catch a, a whole fish and eat it. And then, like, an hour later, I'm, like, on the brink of death, like, like hungry again. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wish, like, I wish these survival games. And also, then, I hate the ones where it's just nighttime forever. And, oh, you know, yeah. It's like well, especially, like, in a game, like, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have had this, um, this experience with Rust. The light that game's fantastic, but the lighting is dog shit. Like it's so bad. Like like there's no like there should be it should be a bit lighter indoors, but it's not. It's just pitch black everywhere and stuff. Like there's no differentiation between like the the the, the lighting. Like there's no moonlight, I guess, as well. So when you're outside, it is just like you cannot see a damn thing unless mm. you put a light on. Uh, <sighs> and it's, it drives I, I, me crazy. I feel like so often the people who design these games do it like half half, right? They're like, oh, it's half day, half night, twelve hours day, twelve hours night. Yeah, it shouldn't That's just not... be pitch ass black though. Like, I mean, like, where your are we eyes would adjust. There, there should be a cool mechanic where gradually your eyes adjust to the dark. Like, you know, you just in the game, you know, like mm. things just start to you're you're able to see things, you know, like um, like gradually. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if many games do that, but. I would settle for that over just like so fucking dark that you can't see or do anything. You know, I think I think maybe it's again something I've established as convenience in in video games, right? Like I don't like losing my fucking inventory, right? I feel like that's like pretty outdated. I feel like there's like certain th it's, there's certain games that do that to you, and it's like, oh, you know, if you die, you can go back and collect your corpse. It's like, well, can I though? Because you've put my corpse at the bottom of this fucking dungeon, yeah. right? And I haven't got all my shit that let me fight down there in the first place. Yeah. So I'm, am I now fucked? Like, yeah. it's like no one thought about this shit. It's, it, but it happens in AAA games that are coming out kind of right now. And it's pretty, pretty astonishing. There's, the, there, there's that. And, I, and another, another one I hate is um, stupid, stupidly low limits on inventory. Like, especially a game that presents so much oh crap God, for you to pick up absolutely right and all yeah. of a sudden you're like okay i need all this stuff and i might need all this stuff but i'm com i'm always over encumbered i like i you know what i mean like i'm holding like a couple things that i think i'm gonna need but i can't basically pick up any other things like it's so limiting and it just feels like shit every time like i don't yeah. know i hate that mechanic and then nobody ever seems to get it right either. It's hard to, and, and the other thing that the games don't seem to get right, I've noticed, is when to spend your consumables, right? Yeah. Like, because. Do you guys do what I do and finish a game with like a million potions? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I never it, use it, them. Everyone does. I never it's use them. It's so I never hard to like them. figure out. Here's, just, what they, here's what they should do, I think, in, genu genuinely. Instead of having them as individual potions that you have to keep track of and decide whether to use. When you acquire a potion, it becomes like a buff that you can apply for yourself, and it has a cooldown. That would make more sense. So now you own this potion, you know how to brew it, you're just doing that. In the time off, or when you go to sleep, whatever, you set all your things brewing, you don't have to fuck around with saying, oh, I've only got three of these left, is it worth it before I fight this wyvern to drink my potion? It's just a buff that I have, and I could load a couple of mons, so you can't have too many active at once and become overpowered. You can have, like, two buffs at once, put that in your buff slots, and, and you're, you're buffed. Job done. You yeah. need to fuck about. Yeah. No fucking about. Instead of all this nonsense. I mean, any game where it's like, crafting is in the game, you must gather herbs. That was the worst part of Witcher to me, was having a fucking, I'm running, I'm being, I'm doing this dramatic run on a horseback through wilderness, and I'm sort of like, oh, wait a minute, is that a Behenja flower? I need that. It's like stopping, getting off your horse, picking a flower, fuck off. I think I, so I think, it, I think yeah. you, if you're going to have that in a game, um, something that you're like, oh yeah, I'm I I need that, or you know, I need some of those, or whatever. You need to have somewhere in the game 
for you to do that kind of stuff. And it's not just like something that is done on the road or like mid combat or whatever. You know what I mean? You have to have like a base that you can go back to, take stuff back to, do some crafting or whatever, test out some of the shit that you made and then go back out sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. like you can't just do it in line like that. It, it, it's... I don't... It must be popular because it's in every fucking game. Yeah, I don't know if it, I, I don't know if it's it necessarily boring. popular, and I think a lot of people probably do think it's pretty boring and and kind of useless as well. Like I, I don't know, like in a game like The Witcher where you just want to fight stuff and progress the story, I don't think you need to get bogged down in all that shit. You know? Yeah, I, I guess it depends, right? But I think a lot of the games put it in because it was in the previous game, yeah. or they think they want it. They need to give some loot, and a potion is a standard piece of loot that. That is also quite usually quite responsive. Like you're low on health, you take a potion, right? But I think they tend to go into games and genres and types types of games like auto battlers and these types of things. And how do you use them in auto battlers? Like, well, you can't use it while the auto battlers go. No one said when do you use it beforehand, afterhand. Like you know. But I think the answer you're right, Sips, is something like make them make them basically hot bar equipped so they're anyway there's, there's good there's just good solutions, make it interesting it's make such it a common I, I, and, problem. and also just like consumables for the sake of consumables like i think consumables could be more interesting if it was like yeah here find these kind of hard to find plants or whatever store them in your base so that you don't have an inventory full of crap that you never use or whatever and then when you get all of the right components you can make a potion that just gives you a permanent buff but not a huge buff just something you know, something to work towards, like something yeah. just like a, as like a, a sideliner. You're just like, oh yeah, it's not gonna. You know, I, I'll go explore this this area. It's more of an open area with no story, or whatever. But I can collect some items or whatever, and maybe get a buff, so I'm ready for the next part of the game. I think that's fine. Yeah, I've got I've got one for you. This is as annoying as it gets when it comes to these kind of things. Games where you can craft items, but the items you craft are nowhere near as good as the ones you can just find. Like doing a dungeon or killing a monster. Yeah, yeah. So a prime example of this, I played a game called Salasta, which is like a sort of D and D ripoff game. Um, and you know, you go around and you do your adventure in your party, and you can collect ore and rare items and shit sure. to make stuff and armor and swords. But it's never as good as the stuff you get from the actual quests. No. To me, the core of these games is: I go into a dungeon, I fight dangerous monsters, I get past traps, I do puzzles. And the reward is some cool stuff that has cool effects and is good for yeah. heroes and all the rest of it. Not going and digging ore out of a mountain in order to make a very basic longsword. That whole system, you could just get rid of it. Just yeah. get rid of it. It's boring and dog shit. There's no fun to just collecting ore. And in the middle of your adventure, you have to stop and pick a flower and chop down a tree. It, 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 that game is a different game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if it's something exactly. like Minecraft, where you have to go and dig that stuff to craft, yeah, things, part of the progression is is all that. Exactly, yeah. if it's yeah. exactly if it's the right place, it's baked it, it right makes into sense. it. Yeah. Totally. Anyway, I could, anyway, I totally consumables get it. Anyway, sorry, and I, crafting rant over. Just wanted yeah. to complain about about things in games for a second. All so right, have you guys I've played got, wait, 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 I've got a recommendation. Sorry, wait, let's go not talk video games. We'll be here all day talking video games. All right, sorry. sorry, sorry. I, haven't, I haven't played Zelda. My my son wants to get it, but he just bought it, yeah. uh, Minecraft Legends, which he's been enjoying. I cannot stop hearing enough about it from everyone, but go on, Pooflex. All right, you, you we, talk. we've done 20 minutes of, of video game talk. No, we haven't. I think sorry. we should expand. We have. We've been talking about consumables for possibly 45 sorry, minutes. Sorry, shall we actually. do TV shows? It might be so 80 I watched, minutes. I watched The Silo. I What'd watched you The Silo. I really like it. It's good, eh? Um, I watched 10 I minutes like it so of it far. and my wife hated it. So now I have to uh, watch it on my own. So <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm getting like little bits of Fallout side quest vibes, but I yes. do like it. Yeah. I, um, I, I felt like the third episode was just... If you're doing what felt to me like a filler episode on the third episode, I'm, I'm not holding out too much hope for this being a classic. But it's, it's okay. I, um, it it's fine. one of those shows where I feel like just the setting alone could kind of carry it through. Like, not uh, for me, like some shows, not an it's awful true, lot yeah. needs to happen. If I just like the setting that it takes place in, and there's some, you know, there, there, there's some stuff that happens around that. I felt like that about um, The Walking Dead for a while. You know, like I, I mean, that it was pretty good. Like the first couple of seasons um, were were really good and like action packed or whatever. But I liked the setting enough to sort of get through some of the slower bits, and I didn't mind yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then I just started hating it in the end. <laughs> but I mean, like maybe the silo will be the next one that I just uh, 
gradually hate as I, as I watch more and more of it. Who knows? But it's it, it's a cool idea, though. I, I'm I'm glad you recommended it too because it's not it's something I got like on mm. the back burner that I can watch. Yeah, but yeah. It does have uh, some some Fallout vibes to it for sure. It does. It yeah. definitely does. Yeah. I got a new show for you. Right. 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 And I th- I think I think you would both enjoy this. You you and your wife. Um, this is a show called Jury Duty. Jury Duty. Jury Duty. Right. And it's a it's about a it guy. It sounds like a like a carrot top movie. No, no, no. It's not. Luckily, it's, it's like not. a Pauly nor, Shore movie. Nor a Pauly Shore movie. Right. Yeah, it's okay. Not, a Paul Blart a Mall, Mall Cop movie. It's not a Blart movie either. Okay. It's not a movie. It's All a right. reality TV show. Right. But the idea is this guy is doing jury duty, and there's a documentary crew following this jury through this trial to sort of get an idea of what it's like doing jury duty, which is interesting because we were talking about this. A couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago, talking about what would it be like during a, on a jury. We actually had a ton of emails about it and everything. But here's the catch. It's not a real trial, and none of the other jurors are real people. They're all actors, and right. he has no idea. He thinks it's all real. So he thinks he's been some, he, he's doing this jury duty, and he's just a regular guy, and everybody else here is regular people, but they're not. They're all actors playing characters. The trial is ridiculous, and... They get sequestered for several weeks. Right. So he has to live with these people with no phones, no internet, nothing like that. Um, it, it's it's a really, really amazing show. And okay. um, it's yeah. well worth the watch. It's very funny. But it's also the, the, the difficulty of making a show like this must have been unbelievable. Because all the actors have to be in character all the time because they're spending like hours and hours and hours a day with this guy. And they have to maintain this illusion at all times. Right. Some of them are so good at being their character that you 100%, 100% believe that you, you could believe that this guy would, would buy it. Um, it's it's really, really, nice. really good. It sounds a little it. bit like the rehearsal. I don't know if you've seen the rehearsal or heard, oh, heard of the it rehearsal. Rings a bell. It brings a bell. But um, no, that's okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll watch the silo and then I'll, wait, what's Jury Duty on? It's, it's, um... it's so it's free on Prime. I saw, okay, I found it's on it was, Prime, it, okay. So it's on Prime. It's free with ads. Right. And the ads are like 20 seconds long. Yeah, that's fine. So it's like a half hour episode. There's like one 20 second ad. And sometimes, I don't know what happens. I think it just breaks. It just doesn't bother showing you the advert. Right. It just doesn't bother. So yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know if you guys ever use uh, 4 on demand, but um, I, I just don't even watch Channel 4 live for anything now. Like, I know uh, yeah, fucking yeah. Uh, Spot the Boomer watches TV stuff. Well, I still do watch a bit of TV. Okay. But uh, Channel 4, you don't even need to watch things live anymore because the fucking ads all the damn time. Like I know yeah, it's like yeah. every 50 minutes but it feels like it's every three minutes there's just like, there's ads but if you watch it on four on demand there's no ads they they, they just show well, like one quick like Coors ad or something yeah, every yeah. 15 minutes it's like it's way less it's much more enjoyable you can actually watch a show the terrestrial in a we, we, reasonable we had amount to, of time we had to fire up the uh the virgin box the other day to watch actual tv because eurovision we watched Eurovision on uh, like live, right? Just yeah. on regular TV, because otherwise on iPlayer it's like it's quite delayed. It's like yeah, a minute behind yeah, that's a little bit behind, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we watched it live, and that I mean, it was literally like blowing the dust off the remote to fire up the TV. It's just not yeah. a thing. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I'm not. I'm, everything I'm, 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 now, much, yeah. I'm not. I'm not adjusting my schedule around when they deign to show a television program. I'm done with that. No, I did that I, for years. Now it's on my fucking terms. Thank you very much. I'll watch it when I want to watch it. Well, it's great, I mean, but I there's the, there's a there's yeah. a push to go back to some of that now. You, have you noticed now that um, you know before like a show would come out and they would just give you all the episodes in the right, right. and people would binge through it. They're kind of drip feeding. They're going back to drip feeding it out on on a weekly basis or whatever. But that's fine. I don't mind that because One people a week. Uh, be- because people uh, like just got really carried away with it, and they were like, you're talking to people, and people are like, oh fuck, I'm so depressed all the time. I don't have anything to look forward to and stuff because like something comes out, and I just watched all 13 episodes in one yeah. sitting. And then they, they, they just don't have like anything. <laughs> I know it sounds like such a stupid thing. It's a TV show, but like. I, it's no, you're absolutely it's right. It's nice like to just have a couple of things of lined up, like it, it, that's for the next happened. week, so that you're like, oh shit, yeah, okay. No, I'm not going to plan anything around Tuesday night because that's when I'm going to watch the new episode of whatever. Because that's well, when is, it's right. coming this is out. What they've you know? all decided to do yeah, in yeah. the TV industry is they've all agreed that yeah, actually, the old way of drip, drip feeding it out worked really well. Yeah. People, sure, some people want to be able to binge the whole series, and sometimes that does work, but. But mostly it doesn't, and they've all, all the streaming services have really changed their model from releasing it all at once yeah. to just um, 
just fucking slowly, you know, exciting people and getting conversation. And it's almost like free advertising, word of mouth and stuff, you know. And also, it saves it saves things from being bad, you know, because if we if the whole all of series one of the silo would come out and all the reviewers would be like, ah, series one's bad, spoilers, 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 and then no one would have watched it or enjoyed it so yeah, much. True, Whereas now yeah. we're all experiencing it slowly together. It's yes, and we're we're talking about yeah, it as yeah. if it's good. Yeah, I've been reading like Succession. There's been a lot of because the episodes are coming out once a week. It's good because you don't feel like. You, you can go and, and join that conversation at any point in the week after you've watched the one episode. You're not looking at like a mega thread of the entire season straight away. It is the return of the water cooler chat about well, it's TV nice, series. nice though. I think it existed for a reason nice. in the first place. It's nice to just have that, you know, like... I, I mean, it it, but, nice. it, but it makes sense as well, because if you spend millions to produce a TV show and everybody watches it, then they're going to say, oh, there's nothing to watch. Yeah. So you want to drip feed it. But it's not even drip feeding. I think it's just, I mean, for one thing, from their perspective, you get articles analyzing, how about that last episode of Succession? What do we make of it? You know, here's, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's what we think it leads to. And then it gives people a chance to speculate. It builds Exactly. It builds puts people on the same level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's way it's like more time fun. gating content. Yeah, it in is a, nice. MMO. I think it's good. I think it's good that. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. giving people a chance to, to catch up. Yeah. But they haven't done for it for any other reason than. They run out of content otherwise. Like I, I refuse well, to believe that they're doing it because they want well, to. Well, it's going to get even worse of... now too, because with the writers' strike, there's going to be a huge delay. Oh my god, severance in is the delayed. pipe. Yeah, they well, that's it's just the, that's the delayed. first of many things that will just be delayed now. So there's going to be a big drought soon. Like the longer it goes on, as well, right? Like, I, I think, everything's I think it's just push back. I think it's just smart, right? Like it lets people catch up. It lets people digest things in a more appropriate way. It doesn't make force people to feel like they have to. Uh, you know, like invest huge. I, look, I think there's there's a cynical way to look at it, and there's um a healthy way to look at it, right? And I think that the movies, the, movie, the, the the agencies don't care about us; they just care about money. But if it does fall on the side of us being able to manage it healthily ourselves, you know, this, it's not as you don't want to have to sit down and like binge hours and hours of TV just to make sure you don't get spoilers for it. You yeah, know, on the exactly. Night it comes yeah, I think that's, thing, that, right? I think that sucks, honestly. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think we're in. A, we are in a golden age of, of this stuff. You know, I just watched the um, "Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared" TV show. What's right. that? Have you heard of that? No, it's, I've it's, never it's heard like of that. It's like a kind of a. It's kind of a meme. Um, it, it used to be like it was a series of animations on YouTube uh, back in the day with these like three, like kind of Muppet characters. Oh yeah. And, and and obviously the whole point of it was that it went very dark very quickly. Um, so it was this kind of weird. Um, Horror, psychological horror comedy surreal thing right and spawned so many memes it was only like six short episodes on youtube but it was really popular it had like a re really popular following and they made six episodes of it on channel four i think watch it on four on demand i mm. highly recommend it don't watch those yeah ads. have you seen it no i haven't have you seen it no no i haven't seen don't it don't have no. me scared no no it's 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 really good yeah yeah it's it's legit um really recommend it you'll you'd love it p flax it's, it's exactly your kind of I'm shit i'm just trying to type the name in what is it again don't, don't hug don't me, hug me I'm, I'm scared it's got it hasn't got a good name that's to, that's the worst thing about it i think like i think i think it i think it would have done it's on youtube there's a show yeah, on there's, channel there's... four called like uh, alone you know, and naked and cold and afraid or something like that as oh, well i've seen is... this i've seen this it's uh there's it's, a tv show of this now six, six full episodes it's really uh, it's really weird it's really weird and cool yeah i love it weird Big and fan, cool so. you know it reminds me of the um the uh, too many cooks um, short film, the Adult Swim. Uh, if you if you are uh, someone who gets shaken easily, I, I would say don't watch it. Uh, it'll get stuck in your head. But it's called Too Many Cooks, and it's the idea is it's like the opening credits of a sitcom. Um, it's about twelve minutes long, I think, and it gets madder and madder and madder, and you come to realize that everyone in there is trapped in an alternate dimension, infected with some terrible disease that's making them be characters in the opening credits of a sitcom. That's the best way I can describe it. It's insane right uh, yeah it's absolutely insane stuff. so uh yeah it's called too many cooks i'm just gonna look it up again it, it, 2014 yeah it, it's okay. incredible if you haven't seen it watch it it's 11 I minutes love this. long i love this stuff it's in it's um, genuinely bonkers have you guys been watching the uh have you guys been watching ted lasso i gave up after series two okay i've tried to get back into it i've lost the mojo for the show no, entirely fair um the uh the 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 I think it's the third season, final season that's yeah, on it's right the now. Third season, yeah. Is uh, 
it it's getting better. Like it it it, it kind of slow start, but you you know that it's just working its way up to an arc where you know Richmond win or do better somehow or whatever. Uh, which, which is laughable. They only got promoted last year. Which is so. it's fine though. I mean, it's just a, <laughs> it's just meant to be. Like it, it is such a nice little feel good show, right? Like you don't have to. So we, you don't have to, to me, think the, too the, hard the when you're watching but it. But the difference between the first season, yeah. and the second season was so glaring that it felt like the first season was something they'd worked on for some time. Yeah. And had honed it and they'd got it just right. Yeah. And the second season and now the third season feels like they've thrown it together and it's lost to me. What made the first series so good was that it felt like the feel good moments were well earned. Uh huh. And it felt like they actually meant something. And this now feels like a fucking soap opera. And it has these instant payoffs for things. And it, it's just not funny. That to me, the fundamental problem of it is season one was quite funny. Yeah. Season two was the opposite of funny. There was one episode, the coach episode, where he's just off in London having a weird night. Yeah. That episode was so bad, it broke the show in my mind. And I can't yeah, watch it. Yeah, I again. agree with that. I hated that episode. It was so fucking bad that it, it felt. Like amateur. It was kind of close to the on. end of the season too, which felt a bit weird to have like. It was a, just. It was, it was just. They big, didn't know what to a do. A big filler episode. Yeah. Yeah, but it was fucking abominable. Yeah. Like it was offensively bad to me as a fan <laughs> of the first series. I was like appalled. Yeah. Stomping around, shouting about it for like a week about how terrible it was. Yeah. So I, I, I put me off, and I tried watching series three, and I'm just like, everyone's. Uh, these characters are all it made just, you feel. It made oh, you feel. Give me a break. What are you talking? Yeah. This is some Come guru on. shit. What are Silver you talking about? It made dude. me feel. He felt. I don't want to be disappointed. That's not a good feeling. He felt pissed off that his time was wasted. <laughs> no, I was just disappointed. I was like, I like this show, and now it sucks. Uh, I think that. Are you not. Are you not like. Do you not have a resistant skin to that, though? I mean, that's the story of my life, you know, Lost, Game of Thrones, fucking Battlestar Galactic, every show. I've watched and loved has has gone to shit eventually. You know anything like Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit films were shit. Star Wars, the new the new films were shit. Do you know what I mean like, like everything? Which which like, new ones? The the brand brand new ones with um. Well, no, back in the day. The oh, the Phantom that's Menace what I grew and all up that with, stuff, Right when yeah. I was sixteen. Sure, do you know what I mean yeah. for my whole life I've been disappointed by by properties that I love. I'm I almost go in expecting to hate it and then come out thinking that uh, it, relieved. Do you know what I mean like? Like, there's very few things that, you know, like I fully expect Series 2 of Severance to be shit. You know, I fully uh, expect all of these I think, things to I be shit. I think Series 2 will be probably okay, but I feel like so much was given away at the end of Season 1 that I don't know what how they're going to sort of introduce new... St I, I mean, I know that they can introduce new stuff around it or whatever, but like I feel like for me, like the like the, the, like the some of the main questions that I had were all answered and like i felt like they could have probably dragged it out for a couple more seasons and i would have been happy enough with that like it was a nice show and stuff but you just have the answers to all of these things now and it's like what, in severance yeah i feel like yeah what answers do you have well you you kind of know who's behind everything what they're doing the point of it and stuff and like wait, wait, wait. that, so that could have been doing? a lot of that could have well, been no 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 let's not talk about spoilers for service because some people surely sure. it's been out for a year it's been sure. out for a year fair enough yeah but no i felt like i felt like a lot was and maybe and maybe rightfully so i feel i feel like you're a, absolutely a lot, right Sips. a lot the was point is that you like sort you of are, i completely discovered. agree like you exactly you you a lot of the joy of a new TV show is discovering that universe. And the problem is, is that once you haven't got that discovery and that questions and you go into season two and you're like, well, yeah, I'm now in the Everything, universe. I've got a lot of baggage like and there's nothing new. Everything's been answered. And then it, oh, it, no it risks going into just this really prolonged character development of the the main guy which you know is 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 fine enough but I like I'll switch off because for me the big thing was the the questions around the whole setup you know in the first season it's like why are they, they doing that and who are these they people well, no i know p flax but we are so used to those questions either a never been uh, never been planned to be answered like in Lost. like there was never a proper yeah, answer to those yeah, questions yeah. they just right, dangled right, on, them like a carrot what, on a stick that's not what you're in front saying. of you for, for years and right. years hold on chill we're on season one yeah. this hasn't happened yet you can't throw the this under the lost bus We've i'm had picking one separate season. as the Okay, season Severance is the best example of a TV show that I think was my favorite TV show yeah. in the last two years. I'm picking it as one which I am, even with that, 
I'm not excited because I'm expecting to be disappointed. Yeah. Even though I know that's, that's the one which will probably be fine. I feel like how season one went and how season one ended, I, I'd be happy watching another season just to really tie it up. But like probably beyond that, not really. For me. I, I can imagine if this went to like four or five seasons or whatever, it would become disappointing. I'm happy to jump on that train. Yeah. I would love to be surprised. But yeah. you're saying that all these questions were answered in season one. No way. Yeah. Nothing's been answered. No. What do you mean? We don't know. We don't know well, what no, this no, company no, no. even I'm does. Not really saying, we have not really a very that. good no, idea. No, no, no. We're not of what saying it does. that. And, what do they and do? we know who the big person behind it is as no, no, well. No, no. Which like, was, we do not. Of course, we do you not. do. I think, here's the thing, right? Like the more you the more you introduce a setting, the the less it is enjoyable and it, it because because in innately that universe you having that universe built for you makes it more familiar makes it less interesting makes it have less answers like the silo great it's a different setting you're in a silo you're understanding like things about yeah. the silo and they a lot of that stuff about the silo they gradually tell you it's like okay there's levels and they're not telling you in a story there are a hundred levels but the people in their dialogue and the way they speak you intuit a lot of stuff from good dialogue about the universe and you start picking up clues and you start learning stuff that is inherently missing in later series it's that universe building and i personally greatly enjoy being thrown into these settings and having this rich amount of information because that first season is often playing with the the extra cherry on the top of you're unfamiliar with this the the the, the cultures of these people and what they're doing and where they are, what, what, how they think, like who they are. And so often what you tend to find is that in books, certainly, the sequel will try and set their book in a very different setting in order to have, an, unless if it's a fantasy book, certainly they'll go to the desert setting where everyone has a different culture and they have a different way of thinking. And they'll try and try and introduce again and re reintroduce this mystery, right? Of a world that you don't know. Yeah. Season two, we do know the world. We do have a lot of ground rules. And that doesn't mean that the story is worse, but sometimes it does because they forget that, you know, they're missing that element of mystery. Yeah. They're, yeah like, everyone's coming yeah. in. You, they don't treat their viewers often. They treat viewers like they've just come in to season two um, and they haven't watched season one. And, and they, they don't respect that people have this baseline knowledge or interest. Like they assume that, oh, People might have watched season one 10 years ago and they're coming back to season two. So we have to do all this work um, and ruin the season yeah. to uh, catch up all these idiots or the people who are half watching. Like so much TV, TV, classic TV is half watched, right? Like yeah. old TV is, is, is people just turn on the TV halfway through an episode of Lost and people are expected to fucking, you know, catch up. Well, right? if Which you look at the way all those reality so TV and shows basic go, and done. like before the break, They'll set something up, and then after the break, they'll say, Steve's bought a new house in Luton, and he's hoping to upgrade it to a three-bed from a two-bed. It's like, we don't need a catch-up. I've been watching the whole fucking episode. Yeah, I know, but, but like, so, TV so does many do shows still have this tutorialization. Yeah, I, felt their, like, um, their... I, I feel like another example for me, at least, was uh, Westworld, where the first season, I was so, I loved it. I, I thought, wow, this is so crazy like i like you know like the the figuring right. out like how it was all set up and there was like loads of mystery around it and stuff and again by the end of season one it was just like all this shit had happened and then you have a much better understanding of how everything works and stuff and you lose a lot of like the really interesting mystery stuff because you know going into season two it's it's going to be more action from the start based on the stuff that's happened right and then i i watched season two and I didn't even watch it right to the end. And then I haven't watched season three, which I understand is pretty good. But for me, for me, like, and, and it's the same with Severance. It's like, it's that, it's the, the setting and, and, the, and the mystery behind it, you know? And you're trying to figure out, like, why, why are these things happening? You know, what are they doing and stuff? And then you, you're coming up with all these theories because they give you so little information. And I think that's the thing. You, you, you get nothing and then you just get fucking tons of stuff right at the end of the season and it's like oh shit like a million of my questions have been answered now and like i just don't know if i'm that interested anymore sort of thing you know i think i <laughs> think what, what bugs me is is when a tv show is designed the story i mean severance i think is nine episodes if yeah. it was 18 episodes yeah i well, guarantee yeah. you those extra eight episodes would just be flannel 
and puff pieces yeah, of and course. following characters around. And yeah, it's like, course, oh, this yeah. is such an interesting arc. But it never is. No, no, it's always like, a really boring arc. By nature, it can't yeah, really change the main You're, story too much. To, to fill it. But a, a main story that is just like pretty concise, even if it's pretty simple, I don't mind if it's just like all in 18 episodes just to tell a good story. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd yeah. be we so don't need happy season, with that. We don't need season two, yeah, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't need like a million like, like solo beard episodes like, you know, or or whatever. Like, just just give me a cool story. However Just long it needs to be, and I'm done, and yeah. I'm good, like, and I, I will, I will sing, sing its praises till the, the end the of time. I don't need the prequel trilogy. I don't need the the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. I don't need it's this too much. Stuff. Like, yeah. I understand it makes money, and sequels and prequels and yeah. things that lean on other things are good, but but they're not. They're not severance like, bed sheets and it, lunch boxes. And like <laughs> I think, I think you can ruin your your the taste of um something you know like yeah. th there is that too i think a lot of people feel like like with game of thrones specifically that was something they were hugely passionate about and uh. it was pulled it was pulled it was ruined for them like actively pulled out rug rug pulled you know well the and pacing was such was another weird thing mouth, wasn't it because right? the the previous seasons the earlier seasons especially i thought the pacing was really nice because the books are really long and sprawling as well and i think if you read the books and you're going into the tv show you're you're just like this is great this is like you know i'm just more i'm just more immersed in this world that i already really enjoyed reading about or whatever yeah it's like uh, people then the, getting tattoos or naming their children after characters which is obviously a terrible yeah, terrible thing to do sure, when you're but, um, but then the, the final seasons everything just fast forwarded like crazy and i get it like if you're working on something for a long time you want to move on you want to finish it's a it symptom, off whatever. it's a symptom of the 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 nature of that business right yes but i feel like it, it's just it's just sad that yeah. it happened and that that in, i'm ready for that inevitability with with tv generally do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i still but yeah I, I still i still i'm still there's, there's enough cool universes enough cool things to explore you know and like westworld was really great you know oh cowboy robots like yeah it was awesome the first uh, the first season was so cool i loved it um yeah. and then the second oh. season not so much just because it was just like you know, you felt like a second season for Westworld for me, it just felt like you were like behind the scenes at Disney World or something. You were like in the catacombs, like in the first aid section or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like the, the illusion is completely shattered and it's just, it's, it's kind of what you thought it was. And then in some ways, not what you thought it was, but you just kind of want to go back to the first season where there was like so much kind of mystery around it and you were just figuring it out and stuff i don't know i know mm. i keep coming yeah. back to the same thing but i watched I stand um, by it i watched porco rosso uh <laughs> the other week uh which is an old um 1992 um miyazaki movie you know it's, it's one of the miyazaki they're all on netflix yeah because they they just do so well and it's Obviously, it's um, it's about a pig who's a pilot. It's about a pilot pig, but it's set at this sort of odd time, and it sort of celebrates these the kind of the golden well, the golden age of the the like, post World War One fighters. You know, all these oh Italian yeah, like uh, the um, like the red They're kind of like and Ferraris, yeah, you yeah. know, and stuff like these like weird little kind of crazy looking jets from uh, well, well, not even jets, like biplanes, the, um, yeah, like like biplanes and and triplanes and things and. Um, I, I think you know if there was like a TV series of it, I, I I wouldn't be interested. But it was in it was a nice drop into an interesting universe at a time. I don't know, like I, it was it felt like a passion piece too. Obviously, they all do old Miyazaki's. You know, it feels like he's he he gets obsessed with these sort of periods of time right. and or, or or universes and really does a great job of just creating this kind of. What, like I don't know, it's just it's a good it's a good feeling, right? To be like thrown into this this time period when everyone's acting and behaving, and I don't know things. There, there's rules about what can, what can and can't be done. You know, I, I don't know. I just I just really enjoyed it, and I, I obviously I think that's the classic thing with all these Miyazaki films, but also a lot of like good, well made Pixar movies and mm. Disney movies, right? If you start watching them, yes, they're for kids, but um, they are really good. <laughs> They're really watchable. Yeah. Um. They really hold your attention. And uh, yeah. So I so I really enjoyed it. Just wanted to drop that drop that out there. 
Shout out to Mia, Walker Rosso. Mia, Brian Miyazaki. I don't even know who Miyazaki is. It's just an old Japanese man. All oh, right. Okay. animator. <laughs> he, he's made like Spirited Away and Hell's Moving oh, Castle. Okay. I've the seen Spirited ones. Away with the like weird ghost things in the uh, Yeah. Uh, he, 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 there's a few of them that like will make you cry like um, Grave of the Fireflies and I'm stuff. I've not seen that one for precisely that reason. Yeah. Well, you don't want to cry. No, I don't, I don't want to um, cry. I, 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 I cry enough. I don't want you're to done crying. Yeah. I'm done is that even enough. him? It might not even be Miyazaki. When was the uh, when was the last time you cried? Then what was it about? If it's not too personal, what uh, did you? What was the last? Okay, no, a- actually, let me change the question. When was the last time you watched a, a TV show or a movie or listened to music and cried? Uh, when I at the weekend when I went to see fucking Guardians of the Galaxy three. Right. Um, there's some very sad moments in that, and uh, I my my daughters like me cry very easily at films. Mrs. F does as well. She cried. When we were watching Eurovision, she cried at the bit where everyone comes on stage and they're singing You'll Never Walk Alone. She was oh, tearing yeah. up, I was tearing yeah. up. It, I, I will cry at the drop of a fucking hat. I really wow. am a giant mess when yeah, it comes to Yeah, certain things can crying. really set me off as well. Like, uh, I don't know, music, music especially. I can listen to music and it'll make me, it'll make me teary. Yeah. Like, it's 100%. very emotional. I had a I mean, really spicy burrito. At the right. weekend, and that made me cry. Actually, oh. yeah, yeah, but you're an emotional husk. It takes spice. I dried up. It takes you gotta, spice. You got to get spiced up before you're ready to to yeah. open the, the floodgates. I got no shame. I don't fucking care. I'll, I'll open cry up a the movie ducks. or a piece of music. If, yeah. it's, if it if it doesn't move you, then you know you're not really listening or watching. That's the way I see it. I, I watch something when I'm watching a film, even a film that isn't um, particularly good. Like Guns of Galaxy Three was all right. But there were some really well done moments in it that obviously were emotionally manipulative. But I don't mind that. That's what it's I want. It's good to be in I touch with to your emotions. It's good, it's good to be tearing up a bit. And I do tear up a little bit sometimes. I, 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 I tell you what I did this weekend that I really enjoyed. I played um, Twilight Imperium. Have you played Twilight Imperium, p It's an yeah. old... Isn't that a really old um, fucking role-playing no, game? It's, the, it's um, not on it's, Steam. Oh, I'm I just, thinking of Twilight uh, I just 2000. Searched, I just Sorry, searched for it. Twilight 2000 Twilight was, is, was an old is the, the flagship board game. Right. Of our board game. Fly. So it's a mega. I mega don't. Ha- one. I don't. I don't talk to real people uh, ever really in my life, except so, for uh, trades people and uh, my wife and my kids. That's fair enough. Occasionally, so th- this teachers is the game and other Lewis parents that I was gonna play when I came down to Bristol, but you decided it wasn't for me, and you uninvited me from the session of playing the game. Well, let that's me tell you what happened on Sunday. Yeah, I think you should see that as you were such a threat. I that think so. Yeah. You were going to own so hard, and he didn't want to look like an idiot in front of his board but This game is friends. all about that Cthulhu game. It all comes back to the fact that Lewis <laughs> tricked me into playing a 17-hour board that game. That is that is back in the back did of my you, life. Did now, you own? Did you slay while you I won playing? the game for us, but I, it was fairly obvious that I wanted it to be over. Right. That, we got it done in like three or four hours, P-Flex. Three or four was, hours! And we got yes, lucky. But, it could have gone on okay. much longer. We, me, we turned up at 11, uh, well, actually 10.30 on Sunday, and we left. Guess what time we left the office? 7 p.m. Finished this later. We wow. three, left at, a, 3 a.m. We left at 10 p.m. Wow. Oh, um, that's how long it took to play Twilight Imperium. And did the office so- stink when you guys were done? Like, did one of you guys go out and be like, oh, shit, I forgot my keys. Walk back in and you get that smell of stale people that have been in a, in one room for forever. Did you get that? No, I kinda, actually. I kind of hate and like that at the same time. You know Maybe I, mean? I was the stinky one, so I yeah. didn't have it. The, so, didn't have that uh, here's my question, Lewis. Is it possible to just get completely knocked out in Twilight Imperium and that's it? You're done. You got to go. It is possible, but it hasn't happened with us. So because you're basically in it for the whole game. Like you've got a it's shot. It's very well designed where you, you are doing a free for all, but if you attack someone, like if you attack the person to the left or the person in front of you, you're very, you leave yourself very vulnerable to being attacked by the person on the right, right. do you know what I mean, or in front of you. So you do have like this, there's this sort of Cold War mentality where uh. you don't really take it, you don't really attack someone unless they're weak um, or, or unless they've got something you want. Like there's not often a lot of reasons to knock someone out because they don't take in their home worlds doesn't really give you anything. So it's it's actually a very well designed. It's like the fourth edition um, of this board game. It's, mm. it's an epic board game. It's like the 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 king of board games. It really really is. Like right. it's every every aspect of a board game is in there, and you know from discovering things to slowly building infrastructure to slowly building ships and doing fights and rolling dice it's got all of it um and it's 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 great we had a we had a absolute blast um 
And I will play it with you, P-Flex, if you want, but it is a, a long one. I mean, I, I don't mind. If we've got the right crew and it's like not an evening when everyone's going to go down the pub, then sure. Right, okay. Well, it'll have to be a day. Um, yeah. You know, just... But this one took longer than normal. I don't know why it just happened. It was... It was who were the players? We were all, it was a monster sesh. Who were it the was, players? It was, it was me, JD from The Longest Johns. Yeah. He was playing the Lions, the Peace Lions. Um, I was, and then it was me. Paul was next to me, Paul Choi, and then we had Daff and Mike. So it was a good crew. No Ben. Um, no Ben. No Ben. Well, Ben's got family. He can't do weekend. He can't come in uh, on Sunday and, and spend the whole day playing a board game. Oh, talking be, of the um, bot action vid that went out. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. We we did it the other night, the Indiana Jones when it was really. Me funny. and P Flex did an Indiana Jones and Ben. Um, he DM'd game it. on right. Um, game it was really good. We had I'd I'd say the two things that that were most commented on. Number one, of course, the is it a howitzer or a twenty five pounder? Apparently, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, okay. when I was joking that a plane missing a propeller could definitely still take off, apparently the centrifugal forces of the propeller would rip the engine out of its housing or something like that, because it's all balanced around there being three propellers. Oh, if you only right. had two, it would wobble and shake and fall apart. And apparently this has happened. Um, so there you go. Uh, I, I'm aware now. Thank you for the, for the comments. That's good to know. Can I tell yeah. you guys some personal good news? Um, sure. I, I, I mentioned it before we started, but I just want to reiterate that um, my downstairs toilet is finally nearly back in action. We're like two steps away from just having a fully working downstairs toilet again. It has been out of action since October of uh, last year so um you know we've been suffering big time but it's it's all it's it's coming up it's coming home and uh we're gonna be able to have guests around again so that they can use only the downstairs bathroom if they desperately need to use it and i think that's a really good thing for for me and my family as well i wow. think so it's just fascinating yeah, great. i know yeah i just thought i'd let you guys know so a lot, a lot cool. of work being done on the house and uh after that pipe burst rendering the whole um the whole yeah. crapper <laughs> offline for <laughs> six months. <laughs> Just not the best, you know? Uh, not the best. Fuck it up. Uh, so, uh, uh, are we recording tomorrow, by the way? Because um, I'm going on holiday next week and there won't be a podcast otherwise. Yeah, I'm coming down on Sunday. You're not going to be there for the whole week I'm down. So, we're going to go. I know. Oh, where, yeah, 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 where are you going again, Lewis? Florida. Florida for oh a week. Oh, my yeah, God, man. Me and Pat go to see Bobo. What do, what, nice. what do, are you guys going to go to Disney World while you're there? We're doing two days in Disney World, yeah. Uh, you got to. Uh, you can't go to Florida. There's nothing else to do there, right? Like, what, what the hell else are you going to do in Florida? I don't know. Oh, no, man. Are you going to go to Universal Studios as well? It's like just down the road from. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, we haven't planned it, though. Maybe some different different rides or whatever. That might be. Do you like that kind of thing? Sure, yeah. I'll keep it in mind. Yeah, sure. Good idea. So Go fishing. Thanks. Go fishing. Yeah. Have Go some fishing. Key, have some key lime pie while I you're I think that might too. work, actually, because I think Boba's dad might be a fisherman. It's so oh. much fun. Florida, Florida's great for fishing. Go gator okay. fishing, Lewis. Don't you go gator fishing. Go I'm catch not some, really, some gators. I'm not, although I'm not really an outdoorsy man. No. You know? Me neither. No. You've seen me, right? I've not left the house since I got back from Sweden. Yeah, but I feel like I'd get on a boat and instantly be sick. Do you guys do a portage in the Everglades you're there? Do you mean, do we're, a covering, portage, we're covering yeah. everything. We covered everything this week. Portage, I could do, Disney, I could do a portage. Land in, land in Florida, rent a car, just start driving north as far as you can go, and then once you start to see the pine trees, boom, you know it's ready. It's time for a portage. You're, you're ready to get go. Get the canoe out. Get the canoe it, out. Portage Get into across. Algonquin National Park. Canoe out to an <laughs> island. <laughs> Whole week, shit in a hole, no problem. You know there's a National Portage Association. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. I'm the president, so <laughs> I should know. <laughs> I feel I like we should do a portage, guys. I would I would portage with I you think guys. Uh, I think honestly that's what it's gonna come to eventually. When my kids are a bit older and I can actually justify being away for like a week and we could do a portage, I think we should do it. We could I just get GoPros. Three. Because we would have to, you, you would have to bathe in a lake every day, and you literally would have to shit in a in a dugout hole. There's no, there's no uh, facilities whatsoever. Can I just say you're a fan of portage, right? I'm a big enough fan of portage. Right. Yeah, well, well, then, the one the one time I did it in my life, I sorry, enjoyed so it immensely. Portage is carrying your canoe across yeah. Canada through but a forest to camp. To, to camp but in. Yeah. there is a town in Wisconsin called Portage. Oh, what? Yes. I we've don't know come, if I we've would... come full circle, we gentlemen. Could, we, would, look, we could cast we could off from Portage, there. but 
I don't know if I can go to Wisconsin because I feel like if I landed at Wisconsin International Airport, uh, I would be mobbed immediately by, by a very ang polite, angry Wisconsinites. Group. Yes. Yeah. And also, I don't know the land. <laughs> polite but firm. I don't know what, I don't know like the, the native species there. I don't know like, I, I don't know the flora. I don't know the fauna. So I think if we're going to portage, let's portage where I portaged the one time I portage, because I'm going to be the expert on this one. Let's go to Ontario right. and hit up Algonquin National Park. It's got bears, it's got everything. But if we're on we a little island, Paul. it'll be fine. He's Canadian. And, um, yeah, but he's Sarah. Edmonton Canadian. Canadian. It's a bit different. No, I don't, don't think, think he's ever done a portage. Of it. It. Nah, he's like, he's like, a, like yeah, a city slicker, you know? He it's likes not, poutine. Yeah, of is course he not? does. Of course he does. He probably has like a pet polar bear and lives in an igloo and uh, washes it all down with maple syrup as well. I'm I'm a real Canadian. Uh, <laughs> well, because <laughs> I've done one portage <laughs> <laughs> fifty years ago when Take I was that. thirteen years Take old. Take that, Paul Joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on that bombshell, that's sorry, the Paul. end of our episode love you this love. week. Oh, I got to send him a message. Hell, what now. is this? Oh, sorry, Paul. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.